December 6th, 2020. I took these shots of Samia and Kamro. The in tears in your eyes and every step of our goodbyes. Pink purse and ruffled warm sweater. You left them behind like a love letter. Welcome back to another video, guys. My name is Tafail. If you don't know who TTL is, I'm Tafail, and I also have a partner of mine named Mahin. He's the photographer. I'm the videographer. We make these YouTube videos for our clients, for anybody that's interested in what's going on in our life, and just for fun. What we do do is we take photo and video for weddings, um, commercial stuff, client stuff, whatever freelance kind of work. Now, if you remember when we went to San Francisco last year around this time, or if you've seen my um, vlog, which is the first video that I posted in this um, year long, every month I'm posting a video challenge that I gave to myself. This would be the 11th one. I have one more left before the year ends. I know it's December. But if you remember in that vlog, uh, we got robbed in San Francisco. A little quick reminder, we were at Baker's Beach. Somebody broke into our rental car, took half of our shit. And that same day, we had a uh, wedding event that we needed to do for Carmel and Somia. I watched that vlog if you want to know exactly what happened. Now, on that day um, and after that day, we kind of like learned a lot about ourselves. Um, prior to that, we've been in business for like maybe a year, year and a half around that time. So we accumulated a lot of gear to help us uh, shoot these weddings and stuff like that. But whenever half of our stuff got stolen, it was just like back to square one, back to the essentials, back to how we used to do things. Yeah, it was difficult. Like there's, we had some stuff that we, we use so we can complete a wedding day and that stuff is not there. So we had to be creative and figure out different ways so we can get the shot that we wanted to get. And you know, we really couldn't make any excuses. Like in San Francisco, we're away from home. We're like an hour away from their event that's about to start. It was just like a hectic morning. I learned a lot from that day, right? And the shots that you've seen um, were pretty good actually. Like it wasn't that bad. Today, I'm just gonna talk about a few tips and tricks that you can use to stabilize your footage. All those shots that I showed you, they were, they were, they were pretty stabilized, right? So. Let me just explain what a gimbal is, which is one of the tools that got stolen. So this right here is a gimbal, okay? See this? It's the most common way to stabilize your footage, all right? I keep looking at the monitor. It's the most common way to stabilize your footage. You see it everywhere now. Like if you ever type it in a video of how do I stabilize my footage, one of these will come up, okay? I've This is actually my second one. My first one got stolen, obviously, and I bought another one because I liked it so much. So your camera sits up here. It has a three axis stabilization point. So if you're like walking or if it's a long take, anything that requires you to press record and hold it for a long time, like following somebody, just like pushing in and like all those kind of like smooth buttery shots that you want to get of a couple. Now, I didn't have this. Why is this tool very important? Why do you want to stabilize footage? Like imagine you're holding a camera, right? Your hands are shaking. Every time you take a step forward, you're like, your body is moving. So your body is moving and your arms are moving, right? So you get this like, this like bumpy feeling of like somebody's walking and it just looks like, it feels like somebody's dad's holding a camcorder and like shooting a homemade film. And like weddings are not like that. Wedding production right now is like really cinematic, really clean, really high quality. They're beyond HD right now. So you know what I mean? Like it's taken, like wedding films are really taken really seriously nowadays. You can't just get away with that kind of stuff. Like you, people will call you out. And like, I know, I know a lot of guys, like I do a lot of it, like the handheld motions and stuff like that, but that's because not every time you want to run around with this. I'm going to show you today how you get smooth stabilized shots without a gimbal so if you're not like familiar with these kind of terminologies and stuff like that then maybe you're not like ready for this part it's gonna take a lot of prior knowledge to how to work a camera for you to understand what i'm talking about so two key things that you need to know know what your camera is good at 
and not good at. We go ahead and follow all these YouTubers and watch all these videos and get recommendations from people so we can buy our first camera. But you need to know what it can do and what it can't do. And that takes a lot of like time and experience and like using it over and over again, like use it, you know what I mean? You play with all the functions, understand what it does, and trying to understand what it can't do for you, right? Play with the footage, make sure you know what the footage is like and how it, how it edits and how it puts together and stuff like that. Like if you're a videographer, you should know your camera in and out. Next thing that I think you should take account for is think of every clip in seconds. Think about it as how many seconds of that one scene are you getting? So you have to like think like, okay, every time I press record, how many seconds of this scene do I have, right? How many seconds of this scene do I need? So no matter how many clips you take, how many beautiful stuff you take, when you get to the edit, you have to cut it together and piece it together to make it look nice. So I think of every clip as in seconds. That's how I think about it because I'm already thinking about my edit. So those I think are the most two important things that you need to know. Doing the handheld thing and you're doing the thing without the gimbal and stuff like that. There's no, like you only get a couple seconds of each clip, okay? The method that I'm using. I have to show you like, what I used and what I had left. Um, le let's go to the back backdrop. All right. Well, let me kind of show you what I had left after we got right. This is all I had left. This is my baby right here. My A7S III. It's a 16 to 35 lens, a peak design travel tripod. The only reason why I had this left because we were out just goofing around and I was vlogging and I was using this to vlog. This is all I have to complete two more events. So let me tell you about this A7S III. This came out about 2018. This is my first semi-professional camera that I bought. I know everything about it, okay? And I already know what it's capable. And this tripod was the only thing that I had left. This camera shoots 4K video and it also does super slow -mo in 120 frames, but in 1080p. If I shoot every shot in 120 frames per second, I can slow it down to 20% and that'll stabilize some of my footage. Anything in slow motion, it feels a lot smoother. Also, inside right here, that sensor, it has a stabilization like an axle thing where the sensor is like kind of like a little bit floating and stuff like that. So I knew it had that. Normal shots, if I'm just moving like this and I'm moving like this, I knew that it'd be smooth enough for me to get a couple seconds of that clip out. The ones that I was having a hard time with is the ones where I'm like walking, my hand is shaking. So it's not easy to just like, just do, go like this. And like, if I'm holding on to the camera, it's gonna be shaking and shit. You can tell that it's not done professionally. So I decided that I would use this tripod to give my camera some weight and also get my hands off the camera body itself. Decided that I would hold it here, right at the neck, Take the shake away, hold it here so I can keep it smooth. So even if it does tilt a little bit, I only need a couple seconds, right? And then I would take my other hand and hold it here so I can keep it from like not turning this way and this way. And I can kind of like get it to focus straight. Last but important thing, you have to use your body. You know what I mean? You have to be the gimbal now. You don't have an extra tool to give you that extra stabilization. So you have to be. So I'm holding the neck, taking away the shake, holding this so I can keep it straight. And now I'm gonna do the ninja walk. I can't demonstrate a ninja walk because in YouTube, I don't have legs. Can't show you the ninja walk, but everybody knows what, what, what the ninja walk is. It's kind of like a little bit crouched down, give some shocks to your knees and just walk forward. So I'm doing this and I'll use the bottom hand to like make small adjustments. I'm gonna push it up. I'm gonna turn it this way, and this hand is just gonna be holding the camera straight. Look at my guidelines, if my angle is straight, if my horizon line is good. And mind you, I'm only doing this for a couple seconds, right? I'm not holding it up and like trying to like follow them around and think I'm gonna get stabilized footage. I'm really not. I'm not gonna get stabilized footage like that if I'm just like doing too much. So yeah, so that's kind of how I stabilized my footage. Most cameras nowadays have active stabilization and then they have like gyro data and they can stabilize the footage with gyro data. There are a lot more things to help you get stay more stabilized footage. Gimbals are super accessible too, most common way. Yeah, this is all we had. You know, this is the only thing that I used to shoot that entire wedding film. Really appreciate Samia and Kamrul. And they told me like they trusted me no matter what happened at that point that yeah, I'm glad that I got it done for them. But you live and you learn. Just be prepared for the unexpected. I hope you learned something. If not, if you have more questions about it, leave it in the comments. I really don't like doing these like kind of like tutorials and stuff like that, but it's something that I went through and so I thought I'd just share it. If you guys are still confused in what I'm talking about, I'll go in the comments or hit me up on Instagram. I would be happy to explain it and help you guys out. So one more video to go to the end of this year. See you guys.